This is an example that's asking us to use six subintervals to estimate, that keyword being estimate, the area between the curve and the x-axis for this specific equation here on this given x interval. And they want us to do it as a left hand sum, a right hand sum, a midpoint sum, an upper sum, and a lower sum. I've got videos for all of these. I kind of break them up into their own individual pieces. Uh, this video is going to specifically talk to us about how to do a midpoint sum right now. No matter which version of this you're getting, this is really all housed in the category of problems as a Riemann sums problem. So to do this, most of this process looks identical no matter which version you get. So when I do this problem, the first thing that I would do on this problem is draw out a number line. So I'm going to label myself a number line going from 1 to 3 based upon that x interval that they gave me right there. And now I need to go ahead and find out how to split this interval up. So I need to split this thing up into six subintervals. To do that, I need to find my delta x. The delta x is how much x goes from one gap to the next gap. So to find that, we use a little formula. This would be max minus min divided by the number of intervals. So for this one, we would say our delta x is going to be a max of 3 minus a min of 1, and then over our number of subintervals, which is the 6 that they gave us at the beginning of the problem. So that gets us 2 over, oops, not 2 over 6. I'm doing math from the next step. This gives us 2 over 6, which is going to simplify down to being 1 third. So our delta x is one third. That's how often we need to put a new tick mark for our new intervals. So starting at the left hand side at one, I add one third to that and I get four thirds. I then add one third to that and I get five thirds. I add one third to that, that give me six thirds, which is better known as two. I add one third to that, that would get me seven thirds. I add one third to that, that gets me eight thirds. And then I add a third to that, that gets me nine thirds, which is better known as three. So everything's looking good. I then come back through and I label each of these intervals. So A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. Those are gonna be the areas I need to find. It also tells me if I've done everything properly as far as six subintervals. And so, yes, I have A1 through A6, so I've broken this up into six subintervals. The next part of this process is just what I refer to as the assembly line process. So I come through and I say, okay, A1 equals, A2 equals, A3 equals, A4 equals, A5 equals, and then A6 equals. I need to find an area formula for each one of those little subsections. We're talking about the areas of rectangles here. So the area of a rectangle formula is base times height. The base of all of our rectangles is this gap down here. This is that delta x that we found. That's one third, and it is the same gap on every single one of these sections here. So the base of all of our rectangles is going to be delta x. So delta x, delta x, delta x, delta x, delta x. Where things start changing here is when we go to find our height. Our height is the function value. It's the y value that we get out at whatever evaluation point they want from us. So left hand, right hand, mid, upper, or lower. That's where these problems shift up. So we're going to do f of, f of, f of, f of, f of, and then f of. This is where things get super fun on this one, because here we are talking about a midpoint sum. So when I come back and look at my intervals, what I'm plugging in here, the evaluation point that I'm plugging in needs to be the midpoint of that interval. So on A1 right now, I'm looking for that midpoint right there. So to find these midpoints, what you're going to do is you're just going to take the left side, add it to the right side, and then divide by two. So our midpoint on this one would be 7 sixths. So that's our midpoint. And that's what we would evaluate for A1. That's the midpoint on A1. Then we hit up A2 and we have to do the same type of game. We would do 4 thirds plus 5 thirds and then divide that by 2. And that would give us our midpoint on that, which would be 3 halves. So our evaluation point, our midpoint on A2 is 3 halves. 
we keep going down the list and playing the same game. So the midpoint on A3 is going to be 5 thirds plus the right side, which is 2. We divide that by 2, and we end up getting out of there 11 6. So the midpoint on A3 is 11 6. Do it again on A4. We need our midpoint. You know, this is where it just gets tedious. It's not difficult. It just takes a while. So find those midpoints, add those two together, divide by two. We get out 13 over 6. So that'll be our midpoint on A4. Keep going down the line, A5. This is why having this number line just makes it so helpful. You just, you've got something to work with. So 7 thirds plus 8 thirds. Divide that by 2, and we end up getting out of there 5 halves. So that would be our midpoint on A5. And then finally finding our final midpoint here on A6, which is going to be 8 thirds plus 3. Divide that by 2, and we end up getting out of there 17 6. So this would be our midpoint on A6. Now that we have those evaluation points, we know what we're going to need to plug into our actual equation to get out the y value. So we come back in and we start putting in our values. We're kind of back to the assembly line process here. So all of these delta x's are going to have the same value. So they're all going to be one third, one third, one third, one third, one third, one third. And these are all equal to this over here. And now we go calculate out that y value, the height of our, of our rectangles. And we do that by plugging them into this original equation, right? Get out your calculator. These numbers aren't the funnest in the world, but that's what they do to us sometimes. So plugging in 7, 6 to that equation, you would get out this lovely number, 337 over 216. And then working your way down through it, plugging three halves into that original equation, you'd get 17 over 8. Plugging 11 sixths into that original equation would get you 461 over 216. Plugging 13 sixths into that equation would get you 391 over 216. And then plugging five halves into that equation would get you 11 over 8. And then plugging, finally, 17 over 6 into that original equation would get you 227 over 216. From here, we now go get out the final values. Again, more calculations. Not a hard process, just a long process, right? Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.